Well, it's Tuesday, and this particular Tuesday, we're doing electric still. We're going to be juicing frogs. It's not quite what it sounds like. We're not making frog juice, and we're not electrifying any actual frogs. By frog, we're referring to a part of a turnout. And we're using the expression turnout. Some people use the expression switch, but that can be very misleading because there are single pole switches, double throw switches. Turnout makes a lot more sense. And in Britain, they tend to call it the points, um, which, is, which is good, except that there's an actual assembly inside the turnout called the points. And so rather than confuse that, I'm gonna stick to the expression turnout. Anyway, there are parts to the turnout. There are the stock rails, and the stock rails are the ones that just run contiguously through the switch. There's no brakes in them, they don't move. One runs straight up uh, the main route, the other one curves and follows the diverging route. And they're on the outside of the switch. Next up, there are the points, and the points are a set of movable rails inside the switch that move from one stock rail to the other stock rail and direct the train e either in the tangent route going forward or into the divergent route turning off to one side. The points are connected uh, to the frog. The frog sits at the, the point where everything crosses through the middle of the switch. There are rails leading up to that called the closure rails and they lead up to this point where uh, one set of rails crosses over the other set of rails and that's called the frog. From there, rails continue out from the frog, uh, similar to the stock rails, but now they're the new rails created by the switch. And for the area near the switch, we're going to call those the frog rails. Now, uh, of course, the way the switch is going to work is there's a bar connecting the points uh, the throw bar, the switch throw, that will move the points from one side to the other, and that will direct the train either to go straight or to go down the divergent route. There has to be an electrical connection here, because if you look at it, the frog uh, at sometimes is going to be connected to what we've been calling the red rail. At times, it's going to be connected to what we call the black rail, and so it's got to change polarity the way some manufacturers solve this problem with their pre-manufactured switches is just simply make the frog out of plastic. Then they don't have to worry about anything shorting out. The downside of that is, of course, you now have a small section of rail in your railroad that's made out of plastic. And as your locomotive passes through there, each wheel going over there is going to lose electrical conductivity and it may cause your locomotive to stall out or your lights to flicker or any number of things you don't actually want to have happening. So the, the solution there is make the frog out of metal, but if you do that now, the frog has to change polarity as the points throw. And so there has to be some uh, system in place to do that. On some of the manufactured switches, uh, that uh, have metal frogs, that's built right into the switch. There's a little mechanism in there that reverses the polarity, especially if that's a pre-packaged switch that comes with its own switch machine. But if you're building your own switches, as I love to do, or uh, your own turnouts, I'm sorry, as I love to do, or if you're buying a manufactured turnout with a metal frog, then you've got to have some way to connect polarity to that frog Moreover, you have to have some system in place to um, reverse the polarity of the frog uh, between the red rail and the black rail. Now, there's a system that's been used for a long time. I used it on my HO railroad and it worked just fine. And that's to make this entire assembly, the points, the closure rails and the frog, one continuous uh, continuity. So there are no gaps anywhere in it. And as the polarity of the frog reverses, the polarity of everything reverses. The points, the closure rails, everything. And in that case, also your, uh, your throw bar connected across your points can be metal because those two things are electrically connected. How does that work exactly? Well, you, uh, as a, 
the points come up against one of the stock rails, they will electrically connect to that stock rail, thereby uh, polarizing that entire assembly to that rail. As you throw the switch over to the other side, it now touches the other stock rail, reversing the polarity of that whole assembly. Two major problems with this. One is it's a fairly narrow gap here where your wheels cross between the running rail and the points, uh, and that can cause a short circuit. If, you're, if everything's not in perfect alignment, if it touches, if any metal touches right there, it's going to short out. The other problem, and the bigger problem, is if you're counting on this to connect electrically by simply having the points touch the stock rail, eventually you're going to get dirt in there, something's going to malfunction, and it's just not going to work. So whether you're separating the frog or uh, tying the polarity of that whole assembly together, you've got to have some other system in place to reverse the polarity other than just counting on the points to touch. Uh, the stock rail. So the easiest way to do that is to attach a, a, a single pole double throw switch of some kind to the switch machine and, or throw bar or whatever is going to change the, the points and have that reverse the polarity. You can then tie that polarity directly to the frog and it simply is a backup system for the points touching the uh, the stock rail. In this case, you can isolate then your points and your closure rails and only isolate the frog and that way you're not going to get a short circuit and as the points cross back and forth that will juice your frog with the appropriate polarity of power. Now some of the, the available switch machines will have a switch like that built into them. Uh, my favorite is the tortoise, and it actually has a double pole, double throw switch built in there. And since you only need one set of uh, contacts, that leaves you another set that you can use for signaling or any number of things. I like to just hang on to it as a backup because one of the problems with the tortoise switch machine is it's all made out of circuit board and uh, it doesn't handle a whole lot of amperage. And so if you're using a heavy power supply, as I have always done, and you short across to the frog, you get a tremendous amount of current running through that switch in your switch machine and it'll burn out the contact on that, that circuit board. That's a fairly common problem. So I just keep that other uh, set of uh, that other switch in there, that other set of contacts as a backup for any failures in the tortoise switch machine. But that's a pretty slick system with the tortoise of just having this built-in switch. And some of the commercially available turnouts that you can buy will also have that built in so you don't even have to know what's going on. You just simply throw the switch but if you're dealing with any kind of a manual situation, you're buying a, a, a turnout that doesn't have any kind of throw on it, doesn't have any kind of switch machine on it, then it's going to be something you're going to have to hook up yourself. But a lot of these uh, turnouts do have a place where you can tie into the frog and therefore juice the frog that way. Now, Let's say instead of a regular DC railroad or AC railroad, you're running a DCC railroad. Now there's some magic that you can do. You can use something called a frog juicer. And it's such a common thing to need on your railroad that some of these come with two frog juicers built right into the circuit board. But uh, the way they work, they only work again with DCC but you connect the juicer to the frog, you then connect the juicer to both the, uh, the stock rails, the red and black rails, so that it's getting that polarity. And as your train approaches the frog, if the metal wheel touches the frog and shorts, it will short for just that long. Because as soon as that circuit board detects the short, it reverses the polarity on the frog you no longer have to think about it at all. Your frog just automatically reverses its polarity based on this little circuit board. 
but it won't work with DC because with a DC railroad, if you try to stunt like that, as soon as you reverse the power, the train would go the other way. Well, I hope this has been informative and I hope it hasn't been too terribly boring. Um, we will be back on Sunday with some fun stuff going on. We're still working on the Gardner Mill, but we're nearing completion on that. At any rate, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, or if you haven't yet hit your like button, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please uh, subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this video on the internet, and I hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Sunday with the Gardner Mill. See ya, bye-bye. <laughs>